Recall the first order linear differential equation that we covered in the last chapter. This is given by dx dt equals lambda times x. Here, lambda, of course, is a constant. We know what the equation is. We know its solution. What does it mean? It means that the rate of change of x, the amount of x that you've got, is proportional to the amount of x that there is. That interpretation, that physical interpretation, is very important. It's important because this linear ODE is foundational. It has so many applications, despite its simplicity. What are some of these applications? Consider physics, where there's all kinds of things that grow or decay exponentially, like radioactive goo or caffeine. The amount of caffeine in your body decays with a half-life of about six hours. This decay is encoded in the differential equation dx dt equals lambda x, where lambda is some negative coefficient. In this case, about negative 0.1155 in order to get that half-life of six hours. I'll let you do the math on that one. Now, of course, there's more than radioactive caffeine in the world. There's also money and interest, which compounds continuously, leading to exponential growth of things like debt. If x is the amount of money you owe, dx dt equals lambda x, where lambda is the interest rate. So if you don't pay that debt off, it grows and grows and grows exponentially. Is that it? Is there more? Oh, of course there's more. There's definitely more. Here's an example, kind of a weird example, coming from a speculative model in linguistics. Let's assume the following. Let's assume dw dt equals lambda times w, where w of t is the fraction of words in a language in common use at time t equals zero that are still in common use at some positive time t. Now, what does this mean? This means that over time, words fall out of use, and we don't readily recognize them in their original form, in their original meaning. You could speculatively assume an exponential model, a linear differential equation, as we are doing here. Now, this equation is not difficult. We know how to solve it. This means that w of t is e to the lambda t. Lambda is going to be some negative constant. All right, then. Assuming that, here's an interesting problem. If 15% of Milton's English is now uncommon to us today, then what fraction of Chaucer's English did Shakespeare's audiences recognize? Now, what is this? What does this mean? All three of these authors are great old poets, poets who you should read. But if you do, if you read John Milton's Paradise Lost, you'll see some words that are a little unusual, like co-partners or oblivious. You'll have a similar experience with Shakespeare, though his poetry may be a little more familiar to you. Still, you'll see some words that just aren't so common in use anymore. Things like molds or Germans or bodkins, stuff like that. But if you go back to Chaucer, who is earlier still, then there are a great many words that are unfamiliar to us today. Dainty, had, brighten, ginglin, wind, clare, roots, things like that. Okay, let's go back to the problem at hand. Under the assumption, a totally made up assumption, that 15% of the words that John Milton used in Paradise Lost are now uncommon to us. Then, what fraction of Chaucer's English did Shakespeare's audiences recognize? Let's nail down some dates. Chaucer is the earliest, writing in about 1400. Shakespeare comes next, his works being written about 1600 or so. Milton, in Paradise Lost, that's published in 1666. Ironically, the same time that Newton published his calculus. And then, of course, we have the present day, which is 2022. So how do we use this 
assumption of 15% of Milton's English being unfamiliar. We know the solution to this differential equation. Wt is e to the lambda t, but we don't know what lambda is. However, we do know, given this assumption, that e to the lambda times t, where t is 2022 minus 1666, that has to equal 0 0.85. If 15% of the words are unfamiliar, 85% of the words are still in use, and that is what W connotes. Now that's an equation, one unknown, we can solve for lambda. I'll let you do that. It involves some logarithms. Lambda comes out to be approximately negative 1.7 times 10 to the minus 4. If we know that, and if this lambda is constant over the evolution of a language like English, then what we can do is say, aha, from Chaucer to Shakespeare, that's 200 years, e to the lambda times 1600 minus 1400 equals the fraction of the words that would have been common to Shakespeare's audience. What is that? With that lambda, negative 1.7 times 10 to the minus 4, evaluate it, one gets 0.966. What that would mean is, assuming all these hypotheses, that about 3.5% of Chaucer's vocabulary had fallen out of usage by the time Shakespeare's audiences saw his plays. Of course, Shakespeare knew all the words. We're talking about the audiences here. Is that true? Is that really how it works? This is a model. This is a convenient model. This is a simple model. Reality is almost always going to be more complicated, but the simplest models, like this linear ordinary differential equation, are the most commonly used. It's worth knowing.